والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل يا اهل الكتاب تعالوا الى قلمه سواء بيننا وبينكم الا نعبد الا الله ولا نشرك به شيئا ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا اربابا من دون الله فان تولوا فقولوا اشهدوا باننا مسلمون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحل العقده من لساني يفقه قولي my respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters i welcome all of you with the islamic greetings assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may peace mercy and blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of almighty god be on all of you the topic of this evening's talk is similarities between hinduism and islam i start my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious quran from surah al imran chapter number 3 verse number 64 which says kul ya ahlul kitab say o people of the book ta'alu ila kalmatin sawa in bayna baynakum come to common terms as between us and you which is the first term allah na'buda illallah that we worship none but one almighty god wala nushrika bihi shay'an that we associate no partners with him wala yattakhiza ba'duna ba'dan arbaban min dunillah that we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than allah fain tawallaw if then they turn back fakul shadu say ibe witness bi anna muslimun that we are muslims bowing our will to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this was though it specifically refers to the ahli kitab to the jews and christians in general it can be used for people of different faiths and according to me it is the best verse that can be used while speaking with different kinds of people it says ta'alu ila qalmatin sawa in bainana bainakum come to common terms as between us and you which is the first term Allah na abuda illa Allah that we worship none but one almighty god wala nushrika bihi shay'an that we associate no partners with him wala yattakhiza ba'duna ba'dan arbaban min dunillah that we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than one almighty god it is not appropriate to try and understand a particular religion by trying to observe the followers of that religion because many a times the followers they themselves are not aware about the teaching of their religion therefore the best and the most appropriate method of trying to understand any religion is to try to understand the authentic sources of that religion the authentic scriptures of that religion if you have to understand hinduism you have to try and understand the sacred scriptures of hinduism the most sacred are the vedas and the shlokas were recited from these scriptures that is supplemented by the upanishads by the itihas ramayan mahabharat bhagavad gita by the puranas manusmriti etc but the most sacred are the vedas amongst all the hindu scriptures so if you have to understand hinduism you have to try and understand the sacred scriptures of hinduism similarly in islam the most sacred scripture is the glorious quran which is the last and final revelation of allah subhanahu wa taala of almighty god which was revealed to the last and final messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him it is supplemented with the authentic hadith the sayings and the traditions of prophet muhammad peace be upon him so if you have to understand islam you have to try and understand the glorious quran and the authentic hadith of the prophet i would like to give the definitions of the word hinduism and islam let's understand the definition of the word hindu hindu is a geographical definition which refers to the people living beyond the river sindhu or the people living in the land watered by river indus according to historians This word Hindu was first used by the Persians when they came to India through the northwestern passes of Himalaya. 
it was also used by the Arabs. According to the Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics, it is mentioned in volume number 6, reference number 699, that the word Hindu is not found in any of the Indian literatures or scriptures before the advent of the Muslims to India. And according to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, who wrote the book, Discovery of India, on page number 74 and 75 he writes that the earliest occurrence of this word Hindu can be traced to a tantric of 8th century CE. Means the first time the word Hindu was used was in the 8th century in the Christian era in a tantric in a scripture. And it was used to describe the people. It was never used for describing the followers of a particular religion. Its relationship to religion is of late occurrence. The word Hinduism is derived from the word Hindu and it was first time used by the Englishmen, by the Westerners, by the Britishers to describe a group of beliefs and faiths of the people of India. According to the new Encyclopedia Britannica, volume number 20, reference number 581, it says that the word Hinduism was first used by the British writers in the year 1830 to describe the religion and the belief of the people of India. Since the word Hinduism was first coined by the Englishman, it's an English word, today the Hindu scholars they object and they say that Hinduism is a misnomer. The right word for the religion should be Sanatan Dharam, that is eternal religion or Vedic Dharam, that is the religion of the Vedas. And according to Swami Vivekananda, Hinduism is a misnomer. The followers should be called as Vedantist. That means the followers of the Vedas. So in short, the word Hindu is a geographical definition used for describing the people of India. Its relationship to religion is of late occurrence. The word Hinduism was first used in 1830 by the British writers. It's an English word. And the word Sanatan Dharm, Vedic Dharm, and Vedantist is more appropriate, but these two are nowhere to be found in any Indian scriptures. All these words have come into existence in the past two centuries. Let's understand the definition of the word Islam. Islam comes from the word Salm, which means peace. It's also derived from Salm, which means to submit your will to Almighty God. Islam, in short, means peace obtained by submitting your will to Almighty God. And anyone who submits his will to Almighty God, he is called as a Muslim. And this word, Islam, occurs in various places in the Quran, as well as the authentic hadith of Prophet Muhammad including the word Islam occurs in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 2 and 8 and the word Muslim occurs in several places in the Quran and the Hadith including Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse 64 there is a misconception that Islam is a new religion which came into existence 14 years back and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he was the founder of this religion of Islam in fact Islam is there since time immemorial since man set foot on this earth and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the founder of this religion, but he is the last and final messenger of Almighty God, to whom was revealed the last and final message, the glorious Quran, 1400 years back.